very close friend of our family has had an accident. And today he's quadriplegic and a PhD candidate. And at the time when it happened, I turned to Nadav, my co-founder and husband, and I said, do you want to tell me that Jay now has like has different capabilities of browsing. In other words, will he not be able to transfer his money on, on his bank application? And he said, you know, if the bank application is not going to be accessible on a regular basis, then no, because he doesn't use his hand. So for me, it was like, okay, that's, that's when all the tables turned. And I said, there's got to be some technology that can do this differently. Welcome to our series entitled The I Am Podcast, a podcast about innovation, business, and most importantly, people. In this series, we'll be talking to founders, executives, and various experts about their vision, challenges, best practices, and lessons learned throughout their journey. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the I Am Podcast. And today, I'm so, so excited. I'm going to talk with a female entrepreneur, very inspiring, so, co-founder and CEO at Sensit, Tamar Shapira. Hey, Tamar. Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm so excited to speak with you, learn more about you, what you do. Okay, so let's get started. Sure thing. Okay. Um, I am co-founder and CEO of Sensit. Um, we are in the digital accessibility space. I've been working with digital accessibility for over a decade now. Um, it was a, a homegrown consulting firm, and out of that, we came up with the idea of Sensit. Um, we can talk about a lot of different things. My background: I was born and raised in, the, in Israel, lived in the states. So yeah, native Israeli, grew up in the states, and then you said ten years with I mean experience in digital accessibility. So I really want to ask you: What is the genesis? Where did this idea come from? Oh, wow. Um, so the story starts out where we were, we managed, we owned and managed a consulting firm in accessibility in general. Um, we're a husband and wife team, and we had the, a consulting firm that was locally grown, uh, working with organizations in Israel to ensure that their infrastructure was accessible for people with disabilities, so that the doorway can be accessible for somebody in a wheelchair, and that there was always an accessible bathroom, and there were handles on, you know, the, the sidebars. And then it kind of um, naturally grew into accessibility consulting in, um, in customer service. So assist organizations to service clients that have disabilities, make sure that everything from their signage to their employee training was accessible. Um, and that employees knew how to service people with disabilities. And then right around 2014, the laws for digital accessibility came out. And mind you, just before that, we were already handling digital signage. So we started researching and understanding what digital accessibility was all about. And at the time it was websites or landing pages. And we quickly understood that this thing was going to grow into internet of things and to web applications and mobile was gonna pick up much more than it was back then. Um, so it was kind of a slow process of understanding what this space is all about alongside our personal passion and re real deep empathy for why accessibility. And we understood that there was this real opportunity to deep dive in. Um, and I'll just take one more, 10 more seconds to say that fast forward to 2017, a very close friend of our family has had an accident. And today he's quadriplegic and a PhD candidate. And at the time when it happened, I turned to Nadav, my co-founder and husband, and I said, do you want to tell me that Jay now has, like, has different capabilities of browsing? In other words, will he not be able to transfer his money on, on his bank application? And he said, you know, if the bank application is not going to be accessible on a regular basis, then no, because he doesn't use his hands. So for me, it was like, okay, that's, that's when all the tables turned. And I said, there's got to be some technology that can do this differently. Wow. So that's... We'll get into it, but that's really where it comes from. It's this real, real, real deep belief that people are people and everybody should be able to browse the internet, to use web applications, to work in, in companies that have software systems that allow them to work. Um, so, yeah. 
Yes, that is really very, very inspiring. Like, you know, having the heart to make it、um, like equal, equity, like everyone should enjoy the internet, right? And I like that you said different capability. You know, it was a different capability. You spoke about the illustration. I love that illustration. Please share with us the one you shared before. Yes, yes, yes.、Um, so I'll describe it, which is also something that you do in accessibility. I'll describe、um, something that I always like to talk about before I even deep dive into what we do, but why we're doing what we're doing. So you said equity and equality.、Um, there's, there are three illustrations of three people over, over seeing a baseball game. The first illustration shows a fence, the baseball game, and the three people behind the fence trying to see. And there's a short person, a middle, a, a middle,、uh, Height person and a tall person. And you can see that in the first illustration, the word equality is on the top, and they give everybody the same size booster, a box that they can see the game. But the person who's short still doesn't see the game, and the person who's tall sees it you know, way above all. So that's equality because we've given everyone the same solution to see the game, but the person who, who really needs it can. The second image shows. Um, the, same, the same three people in the same position, but with boosters that are suitable for them, their needs. So the shorter person has two boxes that he can stand on and see the game. The middle height kind of has one box, and the tall person doesn't need a box. So that's equality because now everyone can see the game equally, right? But we've given them their own solutions, which is incredible because then we're really thinking about what they need. And yet, that's equality. And when we turn to the equity image, You see that we remove the fence. So, actually, we don't, we don't need to give boosters or boxes to stand on. We now allow each one to see the game from their own perspective. So, the person who's short can see it from their height and the person who's tall. And equity is about if that's what we're doing. We're, we're looking to remove the barriers that society has put up rather than try to find solution, solutions for people. That can't necessarily reap the benefits of how we think they should reap the benefits of watch, seeing a game or browsing. So, we're all about creating a world of or redu- removing the barriers that there are in the digital world.、Mm, yeah, I love that illustration. I think I've, I've seen like a graphic of that or an image. So, yeah, speaking of solution,、uh, are there solutions like yours or how are you better than the existing ones? Um, so, let me describe a moment what it is that we're doing, and then we can kind of understand what solutions are out there. So, since it is coming, rather than to solve the problem per se of accessibility online, we're here to integrate accessibility and create a flow of what we call continuous accessibility for the development cycle. So, we believe that in order for a product to be accessible, We don't need to come like we do as, a, as consultants and test the product after it was released, okay, after it was developed, and then come and tell, you know, tell,、uh, say what the problems are or report on the issues and then fix them. Rather, why don't we test the product already whilst in development? You as a developer will know what the problems are, you can fix them, and then release your product already accessible, at least for the heavy lifting of. Tests and assessments that need to be done predominantly by manual testers. So, we've come to take manual testing techniques and we've replaced them with an automated solution that can do most of the heavy lifting already in development. Does that make sense? What、mm. I said? Yeah. So, I want to I wanna ask like, how much impact do you give like、um, fixing it before putting it out and repairing or solving when, when the problem just Arise. So, how much impact does that have on?、Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's very, very similar to and or can be compared to traditional functional testing. We test functionality of products in pre production anyway. And since it is coming in and saying, why not test the functionality in pre production for accessibility? Why not? Because until now it was done manually. So, you're reaping the same benefits, which Is cost, redu- cost reduction, significant cost reduction, and significant time reduction, time to market. Because if you're testing things while in production, you're not wasting your time releasing, debugging, remediating.、Mm. It's, a, it's not a ping pong effect like it, you, it is today when you're doing it manually.、Um, so, as far as the impact on the production cycle or the development cycle, it's, 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 it's huge. 
Um, and as far as the impact on the company and the product itself, it means that you don't have to constantly have this like this wave of accessibility or, or a cloud, a black cloud of accessibility over you. You've tested last month, but now you need to test again. And what are you going to bring your manual testers in again? That's so silly. So you usually push it off, but then you're inaccessible and it's like a whole cycle. And we're coming and we're saying, hold on, accessibility, integrated, continuous, early on, just like you do development for every other thing that you're testing for, testing and developing. Okay, cool. What, uh, what change are you trying to create in this world? Or what is the vision of Sensit? The vision is to enable a more inclusive digital world. Um, our mission is to, or rather the vision is that every developer will be able to have this tool that can assist them in developing for accessibility. The mission is to create this inclusive digital world where products are accessible, we don't really have to think about it. Just like you don't build a building now without an elevator, if it's a tall building, mm -hmm. same thing. You're not gonna develop a product without accessibility in mind. Um, and that's really our vision, that products are going to be accessible. A person who's blind, who uses his hands or doesn't use his or her hands, an older person, a younger person, everything is intuitive accessible and can be adaptable to the assistive technologies that we use today. That's the vision of the company from, you know, that visionary perspective. And we're looking to grow from where we are today, servicing enterprises and medium-sized businesses to really trickling down and being able to work with the small businesses of the world who really don't have the solution to make sure that their websites are accessible at all times. And then will come that change of, oh, wait, we're accessible for regulation, but we're actually gaining more clients. And we're actually able to open our doors rather than shut our doors because now we have a way to, to know that we're accessible. Look, I'm accessible. I've tested <laughs> it. I've checked it. I've fixed it. Um, nice. So. Super cool. Super cool. So who are you offering uh, your product to? Who are you using the product right now? So right now we're working with software companies who are developing SaaS solutions, primarily because we're able to leverage the testing scripts that they're using. Um, and then they don't have to recreate scripts or think a lot about accessibility. We kind of do it for them. Um, we can use what they have and then we can leverage it and run tests on our system. And we work alongside them also um, with managed services so that they can be sure that you will be accessible, have no fear. Our team is here to kind of, to assist you. Um, we're building out the capability to integrate into enterprise um, systems, the, soft, the development systems that enterprises are using. Um, and that's the integration side. So we're really working today with companies that are looking to ensure that their product is compatible to the regulations because they have to. But they understand that if they only do this on a regular basis, they don't have to think about accessibility as, as a pain. They can think about accessibility as a gain. Okay. So please share with us a user story. Like, okay, how much time they uh, saved and what happened to the company after, yes, using your product? Sure. I mean, the, the classic case here is less the time saved and more the timeline that they had for accessibility in their product. So primarily we're working alongside the product managers who usually have to handle the compliance because at the end of the day, the company wakes up to accessibility for regulation purposes. Um, and once they start the process of assessing their product and then kind of uh, scheduling or timing their, um, their remediation that they work alongside us, then they can really start reaping the benefits. Once they remediate the product, they understand, oh, we don't have to wait for sense it or our consultants, we can run the tests for us. So the time saver there was, is already, you know, it's, it's almost like a light year because instead of having to pick up the phone, schedule a time with a manual tester and whatnot, they're just clicking the button and running the test. But what's more is that during the process, if I'm saying this one case study, we mm. started working with a client who needed accessibility for their clients. Okay. They were a vendor and they needed to show accessibility. And a few months later, a second client came along and demanded accessibility in their products, which means that our client was able to just come and say, oh, accessibility, of course, here's what we've done. 
here's what we're doing. Here's our future roadmap. Won the client. They won the contract because it's not an issue as opposed to other clients that we work with where it becomes a real issue because now they, they're in a time crunch. We have to be accessible so that we can gain <laughs> this contract. We've got it. And, and that's kind of the, that's what we're trying to bring to this world. <laughs> Let's not think about accessibility in the aftermath. Do it already and then you won't have an issue and you're saving all your time and saving your money and then you can also gain your, it's a competitive advantage. Mm, like time saver, life saver, really revolutionizing mm. accessibility. Yeah. Okay. So you co-founded this company with Nadav. Who is Nadav and how is the relationship with him? Mm -hmm. Nadav is my husband. Um, and we have a relationship of husband and wife and co-founders. And um, I don't have to say much more. It's just kind of like uh, a husband and wife team um, on steroids or co-founders on steroids. <laughs> it's one or the other because it means that we're taking the best of both worlds and also the hardships of both worlds and we have to make it work. So I feel lucky enough to be able to be, a, you know, to, to live with the person that I'm building a company with because it means that he can really understand the pains that, that I'm going through. And on the flip side, as a co-founder CEO, CEOs will always say that they, they're alone and it's no different because Nadav handles things that don't, you know, that I don't handle necessarily. And, and I'm handling things that he might not be a part of. He knows of them, but you kind of walk alone when you're the CEO. So on a co-founder perspective, it's, it gets tough. <laughs> okay. Well, you're both entrepreneurs. And you said, I have read in one of the articles, there's a spark inside an entrepreneur when they know something is going to happen or something can happen. You make it happen. So if both are entrepreneurs, you know, how's the relationship? Who wins? I mean, whose idea win over the other or how? Oh, it's that's. Oh, it's interesting that you ask it that way because I feel like it could be you could do marriage counseling, couple counseling on this, or how to <laughs> you know relationship between co-founders. Because when we treat it like it's no different, then it's no different. The difference is that we see each other, you know, and we have we we share a home and we raise children together. And what we try to do is avoid the nitty gritty of okay, you know, the ego and that you're right and that I'm wrong, and kind of bringing it into personal, um, a, a personal. Um, issue but i we don't really we don't do it that way some things are taken personally and then we have to overcome them either as co-founders or as husband and wife or as best friends you know and it's it's kind of the communication aspect of it is important in anything you do in life when you have a relationship so i think that when you look at it from the eyes of oh this is a relationship period it could be a co-founder relationship it could be a husband and wife it could be friends then you have to handle it with communication and it takes a lot of communication and a <laughs> lot of growth and strength to be able to get through the difficulties that the startup can bring home and the home life may bring into the startup but it's usually the other way around by the way usually it's the hardships of the startup and work that come into the home life because <laughs> i think otherwise it would never work if home life brought in which is what the biggest fear is that oh you're going to bring your home life issues into the startup and then it's not going to work. It never works that way. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. So you said um, you're trying like a couple doing startups and you're trying like not to kill each other. So mm -hmm. how is it in uh, a life in a day uh, of Tamar and the dove? Um, it's amazing. So I can tell you a week in because a day is like a week and a week is like a month. <laughs> Um, first of all, I'll start off with the fact that we're both runners and we both set out to run um, a certain amount. So he just finished a marathon and I just finished a half. And I say it because I can compare life and life as a startup founder to running a marathon or, or a half and training for a half. And it means that you need to build your muscles. You can't just decide that tomorrow you're going to run a half marathon if you have only run 5K or if you've never run at all. I mean, you can, but I really don't, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't recommend it at all. And the, the meaning is that you need to really train your muscles and then you train your mind and body to be able to do this thing. And then at one point, it's mostly of the mind. You realize that your body can just keep going over, you know, going, 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 but your mind keeps saying, stop, I'm tired. I can't do it. This isn't it. But when you stretch yourself to that point where you say, okay, I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. I can really do it. 
So that's a huge part of, of both of us. When we've realized that we can train ourselves to communicate, to build this company, to grow. Um, so running is part of our day to day, um, either early morning run or late or, you know, early evening kind of mid uh, in between coming home. And then the late night calls, there's nice. someone goes for a run. Um, what we tend to do is we kind of touch base in the morning. We try to take the kids together to their schools. Everyone thinks it's so beautiful because the family <laughs> goes together, but really it's Nadav and I's time to kind of do a stand up along the way. Um, and then we break to respective calls and meetings that we may have. Either we'll sit in an office together or one will sit at the home office and the other um, will go out to the office. And um, and then we're working. Sometimes we have joint calls. So now I'm with you and I'll go over to the office and then we have a call together with the US. We'll break each to their respective ways and then come back in the evening to get on more calls together. And that's what usually happens. But we're each taking care of, you know, I'm on business development and all of the above. And the dev handles product and everything that has to do with accessibility subject matter. So there are days where we don't even cross roads because we're each in the zone, which is interesting. I know. <laughs> interesting. Yes. But yeah, really inspiring. I saw you like, are you, I'm not sure if it's a pitch or you're presenting, but you're carrying your baby. You remember that <laughs> like months ago? <laughs> yes. yes. Of so course, of course. what, what are your values? So you also said uh, you don't just work with it, but you live, right? Of live course. by it. Okay. So please talk to us about them. Absolutely. First and foremost, um, you know, other than the value of kindness, respect, and love, which is something that I teach to my kids, um, the biggest value that I bring into the company and also in my life is inclusion. So I really, really, truly, truly believe in the fact that everybody is a person. Everybody has a heart. And I'm not even going to go into, you know, good and bad or whatnot. But first of all, there's empathy. We have to come out and, and be empathetic to a person. I was just speaking to somebody and telling them how when I receive an email with a spelling error, once in my in the, in the past, I would look at it and I was like, oh, okay, you know, why don't they proofread and whatnot? Today, I look at it and I just oversee it. You never know what happens on the other side. Is it a spelling error because of dyslexia? Is it a spelling error because the person might be on the spectrum and he's just learning to write or read, he or she? Um, it's really to pay attention to the details of how empathetic I am. It's no judging. It's very difficult in a world where all we do is we kind of judge others and we think about ourselves and to start thinking about others, but also to do it with a happy medium, kind of with balance. So I'm not a nonprofit organization. As a, I'm a business, right? And I think about my, my profit and I live for my kids. I'm doing what I'm doing for myself and my family. Um, but then there's something greater than just making money. There's really people on the other side that are really having trouble using your software system. And I really don't think that that's okay. So I've created a business out of what I think is not okay and what you need, but I'm also giving you those tools to not only do it just for now, to be able to do it for the long run, and maybe you'll also be able, you know, you'll hire a, an employee with a disability because now your software system is actually accessible and the employee is proud to work for you and you'll get, you'll gain from it. So my values are truly stuck to inclusivity and, you know, then the kindness and respect, I think, for each other is, is a huge thing. Wow. Yeah, I think that's really very timely. Diversity, inclusivity, equity, like everybody has a chance to do whatever makes them happy. Okay, so how many people are there in your team now, Tamar? Um, so we're a team of 10. We're split between Israel, the US, and India. Um, we have some developers out um, in India. We have a team that manages actually there. They've partnered. And we have a team here in Israel. Most of our team are developers and QA test engineers. And um, I was talking to you because we have some DevOps as well. But uh, we're, we're now growing. We're now growing. And that is kind of the natural path of moving forward and getting to where we want to go, which is a whole other podcast about growth, um, different than what most people think growth may be. But that's kind of where we are right now. We're growing our team and growing our client base and further developing the product. Exciting. It's exciting times. It's really exciting. 
it's like there's excitement and there's fear also because all of a sudden I recognize that I need to be in a growth mindset. It's a different mindset to be in than, than just kind of like starting out and doing little things here and there to make it work. Now it's about, okay, hold on. It's not risk taking. We're doing this for a reason of growth. We have a goal. We have, it's, it's very interesting to, to be in this position right now. Mm, oh, so did it become a challenge? I mean, hiring. There's the answer is yes and no. There's always challenges. And I think the biggest challenge is, is the challenge that we as individuals put upon ourselves. I strive for, you know, for, for greatness and for success. And I put myself on a, a very high pedestal myself. And if I don't reach what I expect my, of myself, that becomes a challenge. So of course, hiring is challenging because you want to find the right person. And then you, I question, am I making the right decision? Which also comes to values, yeah? Because if I look at someone's CV, how can I look at someone's CV and say, wait, that they're not a fit. I feel like I need to give them a chance. Do I have a chance to even speak to them on the phone? It's so time consuming. So I create my own challenges for myself <laughs> because I want to, you know, I, I strive. Um, so of course there's challenges, but it's also a choice. So once you, you understand that I'm making the choice, I'm putting myself through these challenges. It makes the challenge something that's not difficult to overcome, rather exciting to overcome. It's part of my journey. Yeah. Well, is there a startup belief that now you, you say, okay, I disagree with that? Of course, of course. Because What's I'm, I'm like the completely, I feel like I'm the entrepreneur in the road untaken. It's like my profile as an entrepreneur is so off the beaten track depending on which ecosystem you're in. Um, we chose to go the bootstrap way, and then we chose to go the bootstrap and hybrid way where we bring in private investors. I went out, I, I would say too early to the VC scene, and I just felt like I was the, a black swan because we are different. We are different. We're building it differently. We have different ways of get, going to market and we're a completely different space. And I'm a different type of person and believer and it's my first startup. So it's like, I need to just go in the path that I believe that we're going to make it work. And when they say move fast, break things, it's true, except that I'm not willing to completely break people. So then there's always that tad bit of like empathy along the way. Like I have to do it a little bit more gently because people are individuals. Um, a lot of things. We built out the POC. It's like I didn't go from step one, step two. It's not by the book. But that's my mm. experience. I'm not a by the book person. So if anyone comes and teaches how to do something, I say take a little here, take a little there, take a little there and create your own sandwich. There's not just one way to make a sandwich and eat it <laughs> in the startup world. <laughs> wow, so kind, so kind. Okay, so this is going to be my last question. Um, you have to fill the statement, I am Tamar, your blank founder. How do you want to be known for? Oh, wow. Uh, I am Tamar, you're enthusiastic, never given up, will be here for the long run founder. Nice. Okay. Where can they reach you, Tamar? The easiest way to connect with you? The easiest way is on LinkedIn. Connect with me directly. Um, you can go to our website if you want to learn a little bit more about Sensit. You can reach out to me directly through my email, Tamar at Sensit360.com. Um, but reach out for questions. Nothing, you know, I, I, I have a product and I have a service and we can do everything for you. But if you want to know accessibility and just have a, a little chat or just a question about what you should do, reach out because the most important thing is that you're thinking accessibility and you'll do it. That's, yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, so for usability, operability and digital accessibility, so reach out to Tamar. All the best to sense it and to you, Tamar. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much, May. This podcast is powered by iamops.io. Optimize your cloud infrastructure and CICT process with iMops.io dedicated DevOps team. Check out www.imops.io and get a DevOps team now. Make sure to check out www.imops.io if you want to know more about us. Subscribe to our podcast so you can get notified every time we post a new video. Thank you and you have a great day.